Hey, it's me, Jen again, and today we're going to interview a doc. Stick around. So if you're new to this channel, please take a moment to like and subscribe and hit the bell icon. You're not going to want to miss any of the upcoming content that's going to be on this channel. Today's video is an interview with Dr. Brittany Henderson. She's a thyroid specialist and endocrinologist at the Charleston Thyroid Clinic. Let's get this interview started. Dr. Henderson, please tell us a little bit about yourself and how long you've been practicing medicine. I'm a board certified endocrinologist with additional training in internal medicine. I have specialized training in both thyroid disease management and was medical director of the thyroid clinics at both Duke University and Wake Forest Baptist Medical Center before starting my own practice, the Charleston Thyroid Center located in Mount Pleasant, South Carolina. I completed an extra year of fellowship in thyroid cancer research at Duke, and I've been an attending physician for the last seven years. My clinical practice has always been thyroid focused. What specifically made you choose to go into this field of medicine? I chose to go into medicine after one of my close family members became sick. Her treatment journey was my first introduction to medicine, prompting me to change my undergraduate major to pre-med and apply for medical school. Have you yourself struggled with thyroid nodules and can you relate to your patients in this way? I've not personally struggled with thyroid disease. My passion for thyroid patients and treatment comes from my love of endocrinology and exposure to thyroid care during my residency. During that time, I worked many long hours with an endocrinologist that specialized in thyroid care, thereby solidifying my passion to become a thyroidologist. How long have you been performing thyroid PEI, percutaneous ethanol injection ablation? I've been performing PEI or percutaneous ethanol injection for the last two and a half years. I perform many procedures at both Wake Forest and at my current practice in Charleston, South Carolina. Where did you receive your training in this procedure and what all is involved? I received training at the Thyroid Center of Santa Monica and it took months of preparation before integrating it into my clinical practice. It's important that doctors offering PEI are competent in thyroid biopsy and ultrasound. For the last eight years, I've been certified by the American Academy of Clinical Endocrinologists in neck ultrasound, something called ECNU certification, and have performed tens of thousands of ultrasound and biopsy procedures. Approximately, how many cases have you treated with PEI? Is this a common request of patients at your practice? I've treated close to 200 patients with PEI. It's becoming a more common request of patients who have cystic nodules or recurrent cancer lymph nodes and are looking for a minimally invasive option. Please describe this procedure in detail. PEI stands for percutaneous ethanol injection. As it states in the name, the procedure is done percutaneously, or other, in other words, it takes place through the skin. Local anesthesia in the form of lidocaine and topical cold spray is used, but the patient remains awake during the procedure. For thyroid cysts, we use ultrasound guidance to drain the thyroid cyst and then inject ethanol into the cyst cavity. There are several ways to complete the procedure, but we typically will wait several minutes for the ethanol to kill off the cyst lining cells. We'll wash the ethanol in and out of the cyst cavity and then remove the rest of the cyst contents. The whole procedure takes about 10 to 15 minutes total on average. For cancer lymph nodes, it's even easier. Typically, I inject a very small amount of ethanol into the body of the lymph node and leave it within the cancer's node. Over time, the ethanol is metabolized by the body to acetate and then to CO2 and water. What are the typical concerns of patients about this procedure and how do you address them? Most patients who undergo ethanol ablation are well educated on the procedure ahead of time. For thyroid cysts, complications are minimal and include cyst reaccumulation, meaning that the cyst can refill with fluid. This happens more typically in larger cysts, typically over 20 cc's, and sometimes these thyroid nodules require repeat ethanol ablation treatment. Additional complications include skin redness, minimal pain at the site, or a low-grade temperature. Most patients don't have any issues at all after or during the treatment, and most don't feel anything during the procedure, including no pain at all. 
Injection of ethanol into cancer lymph nodes can be a little more uncomfortable, typically because of the ethanol expanding the lymph node capsule and causing some very brief pain at the site. This typically goes away in about one to two minutes after the treatment. Additional complications published in the literature include nerve damage, including voice hoarseness or transient loss of voice, Horner syndrome, pain, or autoimmune thyroid disease, notably Graves' disease or hyperthyroidism. How long is the recovery period for PEI? Most patients are back to normal 48 to 72 hours after the procedure, but recovery can take up to a week. I typically advise patients to avoid heavy lifting for at least 24 to 48 hours post-procedure and to reduce straining when using the bathroom, violent coughing, sneezing, vomiting, or any other behavior that can increase intrathoracic pressure and fill the cyst back up with fluid. How long do patients need to wait to see a decrease in nodule size and in their symptoms? Are repeat sessions of PEI ever needed? The decrease in nodule size typically falls by about 80% at the three month mark, but can continue up to six months post therapy. Repeat sessions are sometimes required for cysts that are larger than 20 cc's in volume. Typically, these large cysts do eventually respond to multiple treatment sessions, oftentimes up to three. Are patients usually pleased with their PEI results? Yes, almost all have an 80% reduction in volume, when we analyzed my data at Wake Forest, our median decrease in volume was about 87%. That's awesome. What is the follow-up protocol for PEI? Typically, I like to get a thyroid ultrasound again in about four to six weeks. At that time, I usually see that the cyst is starting to respond. In larger cysts, I can also tell if we need to repeat the ethanol ablation procedure in another treatment session. I then follow the involution of the cyst at the three month and six month mark by ultrasound and then I retreat accordingly. An overwhelming majority of patients do not require a second treatment session. When are you planning to add RFA, radiofrequency ablation, to your practice? We're planning to add RFA by mid-2020. What other modalities do you use in your practice? At the Charleston Thyroid Center, we treat thyroid patients using both conventional and integrative or functional medicine approaches. We believe that dosing thyroid medicine is incredibly important, and we know how to do it correctly. We use all different forms of thyroid replacement medicine because, guess what, everyone is different in how they tolerate the medicine. We also believe that lifestyle interventions like diet and nutrition can have dramatic effects on autoimmune health and thyroid health. We offer a thyroid-specific weight loss clinic, and we treat everything from Hashimoto's disease to advanced and metastatic thyroid cancer. We perform thyroid biopsies and offer minimally invasive thyroid treatments. Visit our website at www.charlestonthyroidcenter.com. What is your biggest tip for anyone struggling with benign thyroid nodules? Don't go straight to surgery. For many patients, this is the only option that's offered to them. Many nodules can be followed safely with thyroid ultrasound, particularly if there are no symptoms. When nodules start to cause problems, minimally invasive options are now available. Save yourself an unnecessary surgery and research the other and better options. Dr. Henderson, thank you so much for taking the time to answer all of my questions. I'm so glad that we have doctors out there like you who are offering these non-surgical procedures to get rid of thyroid nodules and just helping thyroid patients deal with their thyroid disease in ways that works for them. Thank you so much for everything you do. If you would like to follow Dr. Henderson on social media, look her up on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter under the name Dr. Henderson MD. She posts some really great content. You really need to check her out. Stay tuned for my next video where I talk about how things went with my telemedicine conference with my doctor about my next RFA treatment where I'm finally going to get rid of the rest of this nasty nodule. Don't miss it. See that right there? That little bump is going. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you need to know more about what exactly is PEI, take a look at that video right there where I explain all about it. And as always, don't forget to educate yourself and always be your own health advocate. Bye bye, lucky friends. See you.